If you live in Georgia or the southeast like I do, and you look in the trees this time of year, late summer, early fall, you are sure to see a brightly colored yellow spider somewhere in the branches with very strong, thick webbing. It's called the Joro spider, and it's come over from Asia. I don't know much about them, but I wanted to turn to an expert who does. Richard Hobeck at the University of Georgia told me all about these things, how dangerous they are, how concerned we should be, and what the future looks like as we live alongside these arachnids. Well, the uh, new Spider-Man movie trailer came out this week, but I feel like I'm talking to the real Spider-Man. Yes. Where did they come from? Okay, uh, the Joro spider is, is essentially native to uh, East Asia. So it's been recorded. Some, some list, in fact, the World Spider Catalog lists the species as occurring from India to Japan, whereas other sites will list it from Japan, Korea, China, and Taiwan. So basically Eastern Asia. Is the spider catalog something that I can look at and order spiders? Uh, it's, it's a pretty detailed listing of spiders of the world, classification, that sort of thing. Okay, so how do we think they came over to the States? We suspect it probably was a hitchhiker, that uh, either spiders themselves hitchhiked on stuff being delivered from overseas, from Asia, to warehouses, things like that. And when you say hitchhiker, you don't mean like uh, like a, someone on the side of the road thumbing down a no, no, car. No, no, basically it, it hitches a ride on, on some other uh, you know vehicle coming into the States. In this case, it could have been a freight container, could have been boxes. Any one of those sorts of things would, would certainly you know, harbor an egg mass. You know, that sounds absolutely terrifying when you say egg mass. <laughs> I don't I don't like that. Uh, yeah, well, the, the egg mass, the egg sacs are, it contains a lot of eggs, uh, anywhere between 400 and 1,500 eggs in an egg sac. Are they dangerous to humans or uh, small animals? I'm not seeing anything that suggests the, the Zorro is, is extremely poisonous in any way. It depends on the individual. If an individual is allergic to arthropod bites and things, they may react differently than somebody who doesn't react that way. Whatever gets into those webs, they will, you know, they will ensnare and they will feed upon it. I've seen yellow jackets. I have seen the uh, Asian brown marmorated stink bug, which people don't like. Uh, lots of flies, other bees, butterflies, moths. I've even heard from a few people where they've, they've seen uh, small hummingbirds ensnared in these uh, webs. The webs are very strong, very high tensile strength. When you mention those stinging creatures, I'm on board with that, but when you talk about a hummingbird, I'm starting yeah. to think, you know, maybe these guys are, are bullies. Well, I think, you know, I think the number of cases where they might, you know, capture a small bird or what have you are probably very few. I see one on my neighbor's window right now. I'm not about to go take my camera over there and, and freak them out or anything, but I might need to <laughs> warn them. Because uh, they have a couple small children. It's extremely abundant throughout north central, northeastern Georgia. It's into South Carolina. Mm. But I haven't seen it much further south than slightly below I 20 in the southern part of the state. I haven't seen it west of Atlanta yet. So I don't know if that really means anything. Maybe I can't imagine people aren't seeing it also elsewhere. If they were, they would be sending me images, I'm sure. Yeah, they don't like Alabama, I guess. <laughs> Maybe not. I have not seen these so abundant as I have this year. They are Great. everywhere, they're there by the hundreds, whereas maybe a year or two ago they only recorded or saw a few of them. All right, so they are taking over. They're here to stay, there's no question. So we've got to just adapt or get out of the way. Yeah, I think so. I mean, people want to know how to kill them. Well, you know, frankly, I, simp I say simply leave them alone. If you want to relocate them, you can take a broom handle or a rake and, and gather up the webbing with the spider and try to relocate it. The problem is another one will be recruited and will repopulate that same space. So mm. there's really little you can do over the long run to eliminate these spiders. You can try killing them with insecticide. Again, there's so many of them out there, they will continue to reappear. And it's just going to cost you money to go have an exterminator uh, remove them. Yeah, it seems like a very organized network. When one disappears, there's another one ready yep. to take over. There will be another, absolutely. Yep. My gosh. Well, the Joro spider's name essentially the name that came out of Japan. And Joro, the Japanese name is Joro Gumo. Oh. And it's a legendary creature in Japanese folklore that 
changes its appearance into that of a beautiful, seductive, legendary creature, woman. Okay. So that's, so that's why the Japanese call it the Chorogumo. So that's what they, wow. they, they kind of think it's, um, you know, it can change into a seductive woman. Very interesting. I assumed yeah. it was uh, Joe, something based on Joe Rogan or something. I didn't know if it was. Yeah, no, 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 not that. It's, it's, like I just said, it comes from the Japanese Joro Gumo. So they call it the Joro Spider. Wow. Well, very appropriate name. No doubt about it. Yeah, I think so.